Good morning, it's Friday and I have a big old crate of cameras here and I thought uh, maybe I'd go through them in chronological order and show them to you and explain a little bit why they're important to me. So, um, yeah, last summer I scrolled through Amazon and I stumbled on, on Polaroid cameras and was interested in the state of modern Polaroid cameras and uh, I found this one. Um, what, I've, what I uh, thought pretty interesting about this is um, that it's a Polaroid Now Plus, so it's a um, modern Polaroid camera, um, but the Now Plus means that you can connect to it um, with Bluetooth and uh, you, you have an app where you can do things like, um, first of all, you can trigger it remotely, so you can set up on a tripod and trigger it remotely. But you can also do things like um, set the exposure time. You can uh, manu manually uh, set up exposure uh, time. Um, you can trigger it several times on the same picture and you can do long time exposure at night. For example, if you have a flashlight and you set it up in a completely dark room, you can paint with the flashlight and have it all on the Polaroid picture. Um, and what was particularly fascinating about this is that uh, even though it connects to Bluetooth and it's a very um, modern experience, all of the imagery, all of the um, results are still analog. So the light comes in here gets reflected through the mirror here on real Polaroid film. Of course, there's none in here right now. Um, but yeah, it's the result is purely analog. And when it comes out and um, the chemistry gets expressed onto the film, you have completely analog picture. And that kind of got me started with the whole um, analog photography thing. So this is kind of my, my gateway drug to analog photography. Um, yeah, exp I ran around with this, experimented with uh, color film, with black and white film. Um, and eventually I, I watched a video on YouTube where they showed the showed another camera. Hold on a second. Where they showed the Polaroid Job Pro. Get that out of here. Okay, the Polaroid Job Pro um, was interesting to me because of its look, because of its boxy look. Um, but in the video, they they uh, probably thought this this is a camera for job sites. It has to be robust, and they dropped it a couple of times, but it still took a picture. So I, I haven't dropped mine, but um, this uh, was still very interesting to me and I didn't find it on eBay. I found it on Amazon as well because um, Polaroid at the time, I don't know if they still do this, but Polaroid themselves have a service where they take old cameras like this and refurbish them. So there was, I thought there was some kind of guarantee to this that this might uh, work definitely. So it was a little bit expensive, a little bit more expensive than you would um, find for this on eBay, I think. But I thought this is a guarantee that this works and um, it also looks pretty too. I think they cleaned up all the, all the parts, they um, they inspect the rollers and I don't know if they replaced these rollers here because they came kind of textured, um, but it still did work without a problem. I think th there's, a, there's a sticker in here. This might be a modern sticker. I think if you can see, there's several stickers on top of, of each other. I don't know what the second layer of sticker is, but I haven't checked it out yet. But um, yeah, that's that's what I found interesting. So, and once I got this, immediately what I what my plan to do this was, um, was with this is uh, I wanted to um, modify it so it takes modern eye type film. So this was still 600 film, as you saw from the sticker, and 600 film has a battery built into it. Um, eye type film for the for the Now Plus uh, does not have a battery in it, which which is of course more environmentally friendly and also cheaper. So 
um, the film with the battery is like five five euros more expensive than the one without. So what I did was um, I watched a b bunch of iFixit tutorials or, or tutorials in general about what it looks like inside the camera. Um, and I found out that b behind this uh, sort of cover here, there's the two contacts plus and minus for the battery, um, which are exposed. So I only had to pop out this instead of taking apart the whole camera. And then I soldered these two leads to it. And for a while I had a ba battery pack in the back of here. So four AA batteries will supply the voltage that you need to operate this camera um, with the iType film. I have it taken off right now because um, I uh, I thought this would also work with um, like power bank battery packs, but it doesn't. Um, so I'll, I'll think about what, I'll, what I'm gonna be doing with this. Okay, next one. Let me think, what was the next one? I wanted to show you this in, in chronological order. So this was my um, second foray into analog photography. And I think that's when I moved to sort of 35 millimeter film with this one. So this is a Lomography constructor. I stumbled on the Lomography website. Uh, I don't know how, I think, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think because they're one of the companies that still make analog film, I think that's how I stumbled on them. Um, and this is actually a kit for for a SLR camera that has a, yeah, that has a mirror in it. Um, but it's it's a kit that you assemble yourself basically so there's the um the inside here has a pre-assembled bit um for the mirror uh i don't know if you can see it here uh, there's a box in the middle where the mirror is and you cock the mirror and you take the picture um it has a plastic lens of course um but yeah you assemble the whole thing by yourself and uh, this is what it looks like inside and then you take the picture I had to modify this mechanism here because um, it was kind of kind of hard to do this and also there's no there's no lubrication in the kit I mean you, you're not supposed to lubricate cameras in general but um, at some some points in here I had to put a little bit of drop of, of very fine oil so that the plastic parts weren't rubbing up on each other. Um, and yeah, I had, had trouble taking pictures with this because this mechanism just wouldn't move quick enough to take a decent picture. Um, so this is where I made the exception to put a couple of drops of oil into it. Um, and yeah, it, um, it takes interesting pictures. Of course, the, the lens doesn't help it much. I think it came pre-scratched it was not pristine when i when i got it um but yeah it has a very very grungy look to it um which can be it can be interesting if you want that okay moving on what was the next camera that i got um obviously lomography has a has a site where they have various experimental cameras um and uh they're all very interesting and reasonably cheap and the the thing about them is that you can buy them brand new so at the time i was not um accustomed to buying things on on ebay and um i didn't have a sense for what you can get on ebay even so i thought why not buy them brand new from lomography um, but I did not ha also have a sense for the fact that Lomography basically sells, I don't want to badmouth it, but they sell toy cameras um, and not real cameras. So the, the look that you can get from them is not that professional, but I had to work my way up to noticing this. Or oh, the landscape I 3D printed myself from, from, TP from TPU, it's a flexible material because this did not come with a lens cap. 
So. The next one that I got from Lomography was the sprocket rocket. This is a very interesting camera because um, it's a very wide angle camera, but also what it does is exposes um, not only the shaft that you see on most uh, film reels um, up to the up to the part on the film where the holes are, but this actually um, uh, yeah uh, also puts light on the areas where this uh, where this film moves over the the shaft, so um, it exposes up to the sprockets and beyond the sprockets. So in the pictures, you can see the sprockets. Um, I have modified it now to basically be the width of a normal film. So this is quite um, this is a square format basically, but with the sprockets inside of it. But if I took this out, it would be basically the width of two pictures with the sprockets. So very uh, wide angle with a very wide angle lens. Uh, a very wide picture where you can get a lot of um, detail on, on one picture um, but of the cost of two shots basically per picture um, this has a focusing range um, the, the constructor had a focusing range as well but it was very um, very janky um, but the constructor had the advantage of you can see if the the image is sharp. So for this one, is it has a this viewfinder here, um, and you have to guess if your image uh, how far your uh, motive is away. Um, yeah, but this one also has the way to change the. It's not is it the aperture? I think a little bit the aperture. For a sunny day, you can stop it down a little bit. Yeah, and it has. A normal exposure mode or a bulb exposure mode if you want to guess how long um, your shot would take to expose in the dark. Also a very toy camera, but um, this one is a little bit more precise than the constructor in terms of which image you are exposing. Let's move on. So after this, um, I was still on the Lomography trip. And uh, um, at that time, I watched a video um, about the, uh, of course, about the Sprocket Rocket as well by a channel called In an Instant. So um, I think that's where I got into Lomography. So the, the channel In an Instant um, is about, uh, of course, instant photography like like Polaroid or Instax, but they, uh, but he also um, had a video about the Sprocket Rocket and about this uh, Lomo Apparat, which, is, which was new at the time, so at the end of last year. Um, he made this video and it was announced for uh, Christmas 2022. Um, so I, I pre-ordered this one. There's a, there's this version and a slightly more fancy version. Um, but I pre-ordered this. Uh, I think I paid, uh, 10 euros more to pre-order, uh, this with expedited shipping. Um, so I got this one in November already. I was, it was pretty quickly after I ordered this that I, that I got it. So, and this is a little bit more serious. So this is one step up from a toy camera, but it's still not what I would call um, now a serious camera. And um, yeah, what this one does is uh, it has um, a way to lock the camera, normal and bulb photography. But this one also has built-in flash, which the others don't. And the thing about the flash is that you can sort of have this, this uh, inset here where you can um, put in different foils. The foils are back here. And you can put them in there and uh, basically add color to your flash. So if you have the luxury of having color film, then you can um, yeah, do that. Um, it still advances the film with this kind of wheel, not with a with a lever. Um, but yeah, it looks a little bit more like a like a serious camera. It also came with this this cool. 
like metal strap, but it also came with a bunch of accessories. Oh, hold on. Um, so it came with with this thing, with a splitzer, which allows you to um, have multiple exposures. So this camera makes it very easy to have multiple exposures, and you can sort of split the view. Uh, it's kind of hard to operate like this. Um, but yeah, this is a way to... Uh, okay, there's there's two layers in here. Um, and it allows you to split the frame into two halves, so either horizontally or vertically, um, by half or by, by quarter or whatever measure you would like. And then you turn it turn it around and then you expose the other half of the picture and you have, you have very interesting um, variations that way. It also comes with a close-up lens which allows you to go up to, I think, 20 centimeters up to your, uh, your, the thing that you want to photograph. And also this very, um, I touched the glass with my finger. Um, and also this kaleidoscope lens, so this makes very funky um, reflections onto one, one picture. So I thought for for what this camera is, it's kind of on the uh, on the expensive side, but it's a very neat format and it was brand new at the time, and uh, it came with a ton of accessories and even a neat book about lomography itself, about the company, what they are about. Um, so it's a nice, I would think, lifestyle experience to to unbox it and and read the the long manual and see all the uh, sample images. So this was, um, yeah, it was a very cool experience. So moving on, um, I think this was, yeah, around Christmas 2022. Um, and I remembered that my mom has a very nice camera and uh, I asked her if I can borrow the camera and this is it, hold on, I'll tell you more about it in a second. Okay, we're still, we're still rolling. We're still good. Yeah. So this um, camera is um, very special to me and my mom. Um, she got it, I think, around when she was eighteen, so in the in the seventies. And um, yeah, this this is a very feature-rich camera. So um, so this takes. A battery it used to take um, a mercury cell but you can use modern batteries as well which has have a slightly different um, voltage but um, you would you know you would be able to compensate for that um, but this this part does not work anymore so you, the battery checker itself works if I put a battery in, in there you can see okay the battery works but what it's supposed to do is um, if you don't shoot in automatic mode but in manual mode it's supposed to show you uh, your exposure. So there's a little neater needle in the viewfinder as well. And if you are overexposed, the needle goes up. And if you're underexposed, the needle goes down and it helps you set up um, your picture correctly. I think, I don't know, the automatic mode might still work, but um, I have not tested it in various conditions. So um, yeah, uh, and apart from this, from all this is ha it has a timer exposure so you can wind it up and set it down and get a picture with your whole family without somebody having to hold the camera and then also very important has multi exposure so you can sort of experiment and have multiple exposures on one piece of film um so this this camera basically does almost everything that you would want from a camera in a very uh compact format this camera also has a very satisfying sound when you cook the shutter. Let me demonstrate. Uh, yeah, um, the only downside is that it tends to let light in, um, also called light leaks, um, because the foam in here has rotted away. I painted the interior with removable acrylic and added this foam pad here to prevent the worst. But a little bit of light tends to get onto the film uh, from the back, um, which might be a, a nice look for some people. 
but it tends to make the photos look a little bit grungy, not as clean as you might uh, want. But all in all, this is a treasure with tons of features and uh, I like it a lot. So not long after that, um, I wanted to have a point and shoot camera um, in the same form factor and I found this one. Um, because the uh, the Rico was jammed up for for a minute uh, while I was traveling, so I thought it might be a total goner, um, and I found a used camera store around my neighborhood um, which had this one for a reasonable price. So this is a where I got into buying things on eBay, uh, and b um, using the the used camera store around my neighborhood, uh, which also has a very um, neat collection. They always have uh, rotating um, collections. And um, yeah, this is uh, also yeah, like I said, a point and shoot camera. Also has 2.8, so about the same uh, same yeah light friendliness. Let me say as the the Rico. It uh, also has a built-in flash that you can turn on and off. Um, it does not, ha not have a, a range finder, it just, ha just has this normal viewfinder, which is um, downside. It also has a, a self-timer here, an electronic one, um, and it, it's very automatic. So uh, the only thing that you need to do yourself is uh, set the, the range. So this has zone focus with these four zones here you have to ca kind of get used to thinking about how far things away and setting the right zone here for the focus um, which feels kind of limiting on one hand but it's also um, kind of freeing if you just have one of these zones and are not constantly fidgeting with getting the right distance um, and yeah this is very th this was a very neat thing to just put in your pocket and uh, have around it takes double a batteries so there's no worry about getting weird batteries um getting film in here is quite easy uh the only downside is sometimes rewinding the film so for normal like metal film cartridges it works perfectly fine but sometimes lomography has plastic cartridges which um did not fit into this uh, this notch down here so um, what's weird about this camera is that it kind of rebinds from the bottom instead of from the top like most cameras um, with this expandable lever here um, which yeah kind of relies on the film slipping over this this part when it just goes through the camera normally but if you want to rewind it it has to grip the film and this does not work with the plastic cartridges very well. I lost half a film that way because I thought I had already rewinded it and then opened this door with the film still being in here, uh, open to the sunlight. Um, but and then this, I um, used this camera for a long time. I still use it occasionally because um, it's very yeah light friendly. Um, it also takes a nice sharp pictures and um, yeah, you can take it anywhere you go and shoot pictures without thinking too much about what's going on. The flash is can be turned off, so um, this is a big plus. So let me think what happened then. I think that's when I got into medium format. And my first experiments with medium format were on a camera like like this. So this is basically just uh, a box camera. It's, it's called, if you look for it, it's called a box camera. Um, Aqua made these in different sort of times. The the one that I tried it on, I borrowed from my boss. Um, it was a, a, an older version of this, which didn't have the, the graphics on here. Um, but it has had these viewfinders, so you can see there's a viewfinder and a little mirror, and you can see out of this what you're seeing in the picture. You can frame your picture this way because there's no way to 
um, look through this lens and also it has one for uh, landscape view and you can see here if I open the back it's literally literally just a shaft to to the front here but you can um, let me take this out you can take out the whole shaft and this is where you put in the film so you can you put in the the full film uh, I think you you put the full film here in the in the top and then the takeoff spool in the bottom you wind it across put it back in here oh wait the, the empty spool needs to be on top because that's how you how you wind the film so uh, if you take a picture you sort of wind the film on and normally there's supposed to be uh, a viewer down here or like a little red lens where you can see on the top uh, on the back of the film there's a strip of of uh, cardboard where you can see where you are in the film you can't do this with this one I, I put a plug in here to sort of keep the light out um, because the this red window was missing and I haven't used this one be, uh, because of this um, yeah, but this is a very nice experience. It's very, very compact for a medium format camera. Um, you can also just toss it in the back and don't worry about uh, scratching anything. You might, I might uh, 3D print like a cap on here, but uh, you can also sort of put it in a cloth bag to prevent any anything from happening here. It came pre-scratched, so to say. Um, you can also put a handle on this, but I, I wouldn't, I don't need um, need a handle oh yeah it has different modes also it has um, you can pull out the the filter here so it has a pinhole filter um, I think a medium aperture and a full aperture and you can also shoot it in uh, yeah single mode or yeah in the, in the regular exposure mode I think uh, one hundredth of a second but you can also set it to, uh, I'm trying to think where you can set up the, the shooting mode. Oh no, so this bulb, you hold it and it stays open. And this is normal mode where you can have your uh, short exposure. So um, yeah, this is medium format. Um, it, uh, yeah, it's kind of, uh fidgety but this is very also very point and shoot um and yeah you can uh, get some nice neat pictures of of medium format it uses the whole length so six by nine i think is the size of the picture in centimeters um but yeah that's when i moved on to slr cameras like this one I think I might have to speed up a little to to stay in time um so yeah I had one of the one of these from my stepdad just like the aqua box I got this from my stepdad as well I had one of these a while ago um when I was uh, at the university uh, studying communications design part of that was a photography class and he gave me um, one of these cameras, but at the time I couldn't, hadn't, um, yeah, I, I didn't know what to do with this. So I basically sold the body on eBay and kept the lenses, which is very fortunate because um, now when I found uh, found this body on, on Amazon, I, st I still had the lenses to go for it. And um, yeah, I found the predecessor of this one uh, on eBay, but it didn't work unfortunately, so I sent it back and uh, got this A1 program instead. So the regular A1 didn't work, but the program uh, did end up working. And um, what's cool about this camera is that it has a program mode, and um, it basically does everything for you, except focusing. Of course, you have to focus yourself, but it sets exposure and time automatically. You have to set the right ISO value here. And um, yeah, it takes a weird battery, but uh, it seems to be lasting for quite a long time. 
Let's see, the, the battery tester here is quite funky. You hold down and the frequency of the beeps tells you how much battery is left. Um, so yeah, this is very cool. Obviously, you, you can look through the viewfinder and see exactly what you're seeing through the lens, which is different from the point and shoot cameras where you can't uh, do that. And it's also this, I think this is the lens it came with, 1.8, so it's very friendly to light. The, the smaller the value, the, the more light it gets in. And um, yeah, this is, uh, this is a very great camera. I took some great pictures with this very sharp, this, this default lens. And um, it feels very good to use. It's very heavy, but not too heavy. And yeah, it's a, uh, it's a treasure, I would think. Okay, moving on from here. Uh, I think after this one, I, um, yeah, I used this for quite a while, but then I wanted to be more serious about medium format, and that's when I got um, mm -hmm. this one. Um, oh yeah, I was using it a while. I had a. A wide angle lens that I gave to the to the camera store in my neighborhood to be repaired that's that was the I think the next purchase that I made there um, but I also got from from them uh, this year because by that point I knew that they were reliable and uh, that was important because this one is kind of tenuous I would think Um, because what's interesting about this camera is, uh, like I said, it's medium format. I wanted to have something more serious in medium format. Um, but the interesting thing about this camera is that it has this this bellows here. So um, as you can see, this is, I think, either leather or faux leather. Um, and yeah, I think this is from the 50s or early 60s or something. Um, and if you think about it, there's these bellows here coming in and out folding over and over again since the 50s you might think that this stuff breaks or gets porous or hard but this is still pretty light tight um yeah and also uh the fact that it has this physical size here means that you can get quite um yeah a good quality it also has a glass line this does not have anything to do with quality but it's just the, um, the physical size allows for more uh, how, how can I sell uh, for more zoom let's say um, so you have this this glass lens here let's see 4.5 is not too good but um, for the way it's constructed it's it's kind of nice um, it has uh, shutter times from uh, it only goes to a two hundredth of of a second, which is not that fast, but fast enough for this kind of thing. Um, but you can compensate for this with uh, with the the apertures here, which you can set up here. And it also has a self timer. Um, the thing about this camera is that you sort of have this the shaft here. So if you if you push this button here. It goes through the shaft and and triggers the lens up here, which is kind of awkward. And I've also triggered this accidentally uh, at one time, um, and then it locks up to it to prevent you from taking multiple pictures. But you can still go up here and trigger it again uh, from here. What al what's also uh, important about this camera is that you have to wind it up uh, over here before you can shoot. So you, um, this is also something that you tend to forget. You put, you push this button here, and nothing happens because you haven't wound it up. But then it's already locked. Um, so yeah, but you can still trigger it manually up here, which is neat, but uh, also kind of awkward if you're if you're holding it like this. Um, it shoots in two modes, so the wide mode six by nine, or in a square mode six by six. That's why it has these two windows here because on the back of the film. Um, there's in in these lanes here there's markings to see where you are on the film which you can line up with these windows here and you can also uh, open these peepholes here to prevent light from getting in 
it has a cold shoe so you can uh, mount a flash up here but it's not connected to anything so I have to manually connect the flash to I think one of these here um, so there's these connectors for the flash so you can have a synchronized flash once you push the button but I've never used the the flash function here um, let me close this up real quick let's take a look inside um, yeah like I said you can take a square fo uh, photo I've modified um, this camera because there's there was an inset in here made of m made of metal which sort of um, shields off the sides for the square image so the light doesn't expose the whole thing I had to 3d print them and replace them and also one of the rollers here was was missing it's um, where I took one of the rollers from the from the box camera which was a little bit too big and I don't think I can take it out anymore but um, yeah it works for the moment I don't use this camera too much but I, I might um, see if I can't maybe lubricate this or something this is not a part that's damaged by lubrication I think but the lubrication might get on the film so I don't know um, yeah it's very cool it's very compact you can also put it in your bag but then you can make some nice sharp uh, pictures with this um, so yeah, very, very cool camera also. Um, but um, it's it's a little bit heavy, but not too heavy. But I wanted something that you don't have to unfold every time. So um, I found this. Also, I have to say, toy alternative to this. But the. The Holga brand is kind of um, always spoken in line with Lomography. So these are also uh, toy cameras, but very popular among um, photographers or, or Lomographers, um, as they call themselves. Uh, but this one has a glass lens. So GCFN stands for glass, uh, I think. And um, yeah, it it's a little bit more high fidelity than the plastic lens which this usually comes in um, but yeah it's it takes very charming pictures in the in the middle of the picture they are sharp but then you have this immediate fall off to the sides where it becomes very blurry on the side so it has a very dreamlike quality and um, people who like the the plastic lens also use the chromatic uh, chromatic aberration so the the kind of the color difference that gets more pronounced towards the sides which they I think really like it gives the image a very uh, dreamlike quality very very moody um, yeah this one also has a built-in flash so a very big flash up here where you can set up white blue yellow and red um, so there's this kind of lighthouse up here that turns and you can set the color of the flash which is which is kind of cool um yeah the batteries are are in here uh let me let me open the back so this ha it has this gate here where you can uh, choose the square form format i have this very narrow format here so it kind of cuts off most of the blurriness towards the side uh and under here are the batteries um yeah, I modified this lens a little bit. I just painted the the inside black where it was white before, but I had the first kind of pictures that I took um, had this kind of white blur from the side. So when the sun reflects off the white and gets into the picture, so that's why I painted it black. Um, I also modified the back here. So this this kind of uh, this cover here is um, 3D printed and I glued it on there. I made these these markings to remind me that that I have these uh, that I have the the gate uh, in the back, and then some people, when they shoot with this camera, they tape over these sides here because over time, these plastic um, clips here become less reliable and might 
the, the back cover might fall off while you're still photographing and exposing the film to light, which is something you don't want. So um, that's why people tape over these things on the side. Yeah, that's the that's the whole guy. You can focus down to I think about one meter. Uh, but uh, this this thing is not very precise. But yeah, that's um, when I shoot medium f medium film uh, medium format. I take this with me because it's it's uh, not that light, but it's very compact, and you don't have the whole folding mechanism every time you want to shoot with it. Um, yeah, this is for medium format. Then there was a big break uh, for me where I didn't get anything new for a while because I thought I had everything I needed <laughs> and of course it's true you don't need more cameras but you s you see something that you've always wanted to have and then yeah you see that it's not as expensive as you thought and uh, yeah you just get it uh, for that for that price and that for me was Uh, this Yashica. So um, the the f when I first got into uh, analog photography, I watched a lot of YouTube about it. And uh, hold on a second. And um, when it comes to street photography or compact cameras, people always talk about the the Yashica cameras. Um, most popular are I think the T4s and T5s. But if you look for them on eBay, they are prohibit prohibitively expensive. Um, and I uh, don't really want to spend so much on this camera. And this is uh, sort of a smaller version of this. The, the T4s and T5s have more features, of course, but they also have a, a, a Zeiss lens. This one has, a, uh, I think it's just called the Yashica lens. Uh, and it's not that... Uh, light friendly and maybe the size lenses are a little bit more sharp uh, but this one is perfectly fine for me um, and what this camera does is uh, it has autofocus so no zone focus for this kind of um, format factor you just literally, literally just point and shoot and it sort of measures the, the focus point it, it's sometimes trial and error you don't really know what it's focusing on, especially when you want to sort of compose your picture with leaves in the foreground and something in the background that usually does not work. So it's just a flat uh, photography for if you're going around um, and don't want to compose your shots too much. Also has a built-in flash. The downside is you can't really turn off this flash. There's different flash modes, but you can't completely turn it off. Um, but yeah, that's the only downside. You literally s just press the picture, it focuses and takes the picture. Also has a self timer if you want to set it down and take a picture uh, with your family. And and the also very convenient thing about this camera is that it has an automatic winder. So you put the film in here, um, just put it here where the mark is and uh, it automatically it automatically winds the film for you. Uh, each time you press the picture, it winds it for one picture. So there's no winding it manually between each picture. Um, yeah, it's very convenient, very small, and also has this nice lens cover, so you don't have to worry about the lens cover and uh, losing it or it coming off in your pocket, which happened to me with the Konica. Very, very compact and small. I totally forgot to show you this one, which I got uh, before the Yashica. Um, so thinking about automatic SLR cameras, um, this one uh, was something that I was interested in because it was one of the last uh, Nikons before they went to digital. So this is the F65. I think there's probably some more professional ones or more later ones, but um, this was also very affordable uh, and has a lot of features. It looks 
mostly like a modern uh, Nikon SLR camera um, with the the mode selector here and all the things that they can do with it. Um, but yeah, it's a very it also allows you to use the the modern autofocus lenses. So it's basically a modern camera just with with film. Also, is how, uh, um, this also has automatic winding. Um, yeah, it's a very convenient thing. I'm using the the Holger lens here, so a relatively expensive camera with the cheapest lens here. I think the lens cost twenty euros or something. It also has the glass version of the lens, but also has these this nice um, soft focus feature on the sides. Um, yeah, but of, of course you can use more expensive um, lenses on here as well. So it's very very convenient if you want to have an SLR but still shoot on film. Um, and yeah, it, it works, still works like a like a charm. Unfortunately, it uses uh, the CR2 batteries. So these are kind of expensive, but um, if you get a double pack, you can get some very uh, reasonable offers for this. Um, and it also seems to be lasting quite a while. So this one I got before the Yashica, uh, but right around the same time. And uh, yeah, I also had quite a gap there where I, d where I didn't get anything new. Um, but then I got uh, an, uh, a WhatsApp from, from a buddy and he said he had some cameras um, from, from his family that uh, came into his possession and asked me to take a look at them. Uh, and I borrowed two cameras from him, so first of all, this one. Uh, yeah, and uh, this one is very interesting camera. It's kind of l around the same time as the other, as the Canon AE-1 program that I showed you. Um, but this one does not have an automatic mode. But what this camera has is, um, I would say, no, it's not semi-automatic, but it, it has a light meter, so it measures through the lens. Uh, and uh, yeah, 1.4 is also pretty good. Um, it measures through the lens and shows you if you are over or under underexposed. Um, and it shows you live, uh, sort of, if you, if you s change the settings, it shows you uh, if you are... Uh, at the right uh, exposure for your for your film, so you can set the ISO uh, in here. And the interesting thing about this camera is that it goes down to a four th thousandths of a second. So um, you can set the aperture pretty high. Um, like I said, it goes up to one point four, but um, yeah, you can set the aperture very high, let a lot of light in, but have a short time. And what this does is, even in sunlight, it lets you have um, pictures where you have this nice fall off in, in depth. So you have a very sharp focus on an object in the front and then everything beyond, beyond that is blurry. This is, uh, that's what this camera is, is good for. Um, and then after using it for a couple of days, my, my boss told me that this is the, the so-called Vietnam camera. So apparently a lot of uh, reporters around that time used the Nikon FM2. So um a fact for for this camera apparently. Um yeah, it doesn't look, look that different from the from the Canon except it has this this leatherette up here as well. I don't know if it kind of looks tacky because you don't need to touch this part of the camera, but um I don't know. I think it still looks pretty neat. Um it has batteries down here, it uses two of the LR44 batteries, so a very common battery this, these days. Um, and it uses all the, the Nikon lenses, so I think I could probably also put my modern lenses on here. I don't know how well that it would work, but since it measures through the lens um, without any sort of connection, it, it probably still works. And I also had um, a Nikon lens, uh, a very, very long lens for this as well, that also works with this camera. So. Yeah, very, very neat piece of technology. Also very satisfying um, lever mechanism here. And 
um, it kind of locks in place if you push it all the way in but then if you want to ready it you go like this and then you can can wind the camera a very clever way to lock this camera and uh, also in this um, selection of cameras that uh, he wanted me to take a look at is this one it comes in its own uh, bag uh, well it's <laughs> it's a different kind of bag but I use this to keep this camera safe because this is kind of a treasure let me put this away um, so if you're into analog photography or just in photography in general people will try to talk to you about Leica cameras and uh, yeah this is a fully manual Leica M42 so the M4 is a very relatively early model of Leica so I think the first ones were made also in the 70s or even 60s but this is the 42 the second version which is not made in Germany but made in, in Canada but um, it still has the same basic features it's a rangefinder camera which with a very neat rangefinder as you can see it's a very relatively big area here um, and as you look through it you see kind of the outlines of where your where your uh, lens is uh, so you have this very very open viewfinder and then you can set here the different modes for um, where your camera is uh, where the edges of your image are which allows you to compose your image pretty precisely um, and it also has this this rangefinder here so you can see the second window is right over here so there's kind of a diff kind of a wide gap between those two eyes which allows you to kind of precisely focus on the point that you want to focus and um, you're focusing um, on the lens itself I always use this this kind of knob in here because it, this one is kind of hard to to move around but as you move this around um, this the second eye focuses on whatever it is you're you're trying to focus um, the lens itself is only down to 3.5 so not that strong but um, yeah um, what's I think special about this camera is um, for what it's worth the the viewfinder uh, it's very open and allows you to compose your your shots uh, and also it's very quiet um, so if you press the shutter you hear a very soft click because of the um, the the curtains in here which are made of fabric so that's I think what makes it very light um, but if you are into photography and you you think you need to have this camera there's a lot of downsides as well uh, first of all this, this is very heavy um, of course it's also very expensive so if you're if you want to invest in something and just want to see if, you, if it's for you um, I would probably not spend that much money for this myself now that I have the, have had the luxury and the chance to try it um, also the loading is kind of awkward you have to load the film from from below you take off this this entire thing so there's not nothing attaching it to the camera itself once you have taken it off so you might lose it if you want to if you're in a hurry then you have to kind of fiddle the film through here put it back on uh, and then start winding it and you can't really see if it's winding correctly so that's um yeah not not the best thing uh, about this it's all automatic uh, or sorry not automatic it's all manual so you have to know what you're doing um, yeah I mean the upside is it's very quiet but uh, I don't know if that's worth it for me I would probably use the the Rico uh, that I showed you earlier it weighs the same it has the same features um, it does not go down to a thousandth of a second the Rico um, but yeah I think uh, I don't know but uh, um, that that's probably a reason why why this is so revered because um, it feels very good in your hand um, 
and it looks very neat i think um uh, that's why it has has cold status but um it's uh i don't know if i would spend this kind of money myself okay and there's only two cameras left hold on So this was one that I was eyeing for a while. I have never found uh, a fund for the right price until eventually I did find one for under 100 euros. That's kind of rare. It's probably because it's the black version, which is not um, that desired, I would think. There's a, there's a um, metal or there, there's a uh, silvery with red leather version so this is all black the leather is black maybe it's also because the leather is kind of cracked and uh, not in the best condition but it's not like flaky or gross or anything and um yeah if you uh, if you know what it is then you've you're already excited about it um and if you don't uh yeah you might be interested about this so This is a Polaroid SX70, also from the from the 70s, from the early 70s. This is the Model 2, so um, I think the Model 1 is the silvery one, and the Model 2 came in more different colors. And this is interesting because it's a Polaroid camera that's an SLR, so you can see through here and see exactly through the lens. It's also a glass lens as opposed to the other Polaroid cameras that I have, so a very sharp lens. And um, yeah, it's collapsible. So the other Polaroid cameras, you can't really put in your pocket and take it anywhere you go. This one is still quite big and heavy, but um, it's still more more compact if it's um, if it's collapsed. And you can put it like in a in a fanny pack or something like that. I've done that before. And yeah, it's very neat to to have this around. Um, it also used the film with a battery inside of it, and I don't want to modify this camera too much, so I'm gonna get the, the SX70 film for it. Um, they st Polaroid still makes the film for this camera uh, with the battery inside of it, um, and it also has a different ISO value from the other Polaroid films. So this one has an ISO of 150 or so. So very, um, you have to let a lot of light into it or more light into it than the other camera so you have to expose it for longer um yeah i modified it a little bit so you can buy this this frog tongue here to shield your photos once they come out so that they don't get um, exposed to sunlight directly um but yeah i think this is a very neat camera um also fun fact about this camera is uh if you've seen star wars and or the tv show they use this in in the tv show for one of the props that the rebels are using so that's a very good find for me uh, i like it a lot the, the polaroid pictures that come out of this are a lot sharper than the other cameras and um, of course you can focus this more reliably so very very neat find And that brings us to the last camera. Um, this is the Yashica Microtech Zoom. It has a 120 millimeter zoom. Um, if you just open it like this, it has similar features to the, the uh, to the other Yashica camera. It has, I think, an additional mode of focusing. So it. Uh, uses infrared i think but it also uses uh passive focus through the through the lens i think i uh, um, haven't found the manual for it yet um but yeah it's very very neat it also allows you to turn off the flash here um which is a little bit better than the other camera it's a little bit more hefty it's a little bit bigger but it feels like one of those things um where in the 90s whenever you you picked something up uh, made of plastic, but it was very heavy. Um, 
and he knew it was expensive so that's the case for this is very very dense object um it has a has a built-in flash of course it has a viewfinder that um sort of shows you the zoom which is interesting and it's not um direct through the lens and you can also see um what you're focusing on so th that's uh made by a green and a red bulb to see uh if you're focusing correctly um but yeah like this it's a point and shoot basically but if you zoom in it um yeah 120 millimeters is quite a quite a big zoom um of course it gets very dark the picture so it goes from uh an f 3.8 i think to an f8 if you zoom all the way in so um i wouldn't recommend this inside but um yeah it's still still a very neat little package and yeah this is my my latest purchase uh, I, I can't really tell you if there's anything that's missing from my collection i thought for a s for a minute there i thought i needed a, a medium format slr camera but those are quite bulky and don't really correspond with the way i like to shoot so i like more the point and shoot style um but yeah let's see i keep watching the store around the corner from me for for nice uh new things that i want to try out um but for now i think i'm i'm covered with everything that i need um but yeah if if i collect <laughs> more cameras then i will let you know maybe make another video but uh i would think that's it for now uh thank you for watching and see you around <laughs>